right, uh, Dr. Rinaldi, let's talk about smelly feet. Why do they come? What can one do? Um, you know, athlete's foot uh, type of stuff. Um, lots of people have lots of problems with it, and it, if you don't have it, it doesn't look like a big thing. If you have it, it looks like a, a, a life changer. Tell us why this all comes about and what can be done. Well, the condition you're referring to, uh, we put a little bit better word on it than smelly feet. We call it bromohydrosis. And uh, most likely but, created... Yeah, cre those, uh, do those, those, those hydrosis feet still smell? <laughs> they certainly do. Okay. <laughs> they they certainly is. do. Well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's not caused by... Uh, a setting of a patient who is hygienically distressed, I would call that. Um, in our experience as podiatrists, we've all worked in clinics, etc., and sometimes it's a product of poor hygiene, as simple as that. If that's the case, then some green soap and some soaks are recommended to the patient, and the patient is reappointed, and we see if we haven't cured it right then and there. One of the more common conditions of a bromohydrosis or a smelly foot might be a fungal infection within the skin. Um, this fungal infection could be on the bottom of the foot, the top of the foot, and especially in between the toes, which is an area that sometimes is neglected both in hygiene and in drying the foot. In cases such as that, where we think it's associated with a fungus infection, which can be clinically determined by uh, the podiatrist's experience or by culturing the area, a prescription would be written for appropriate antifungal agent. And there are many different types of prescriptions depending upon the culture or what the podiatrist thinks is going to work best. One has to be careful, though, with an odor of the foot that is not created by a bromohydrosis or a smelly foot, but yet has the worst stench, and that is a severe infection. Bacterial infections, pseudomonas infections, uh, associated with uh, an ulceration of the foot, can give the most distinct um, odor and has to be treated aggressively. And this cannot be treated with simple salves or soaks. This has to be treated with some form of antibiotic treatment. And it's usually not a local antibiotic treatment. It's usually an oral or systemic one. Okay. Now, where in this whole thing, you have kind of three things. Very pure hygiene. You know, you have some, um, some fungus growing, you have this, uh, this infection. Uh, where does it fit in, for instance, like now in the winter, uh, most of us, even in California, especially where you are in uh, Brooklyn, you know, we're wearing heavy shoes and, 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 and we, we, we don't take them out quite as often. And, you know, like the, the dark, you know, the dark, moist environment keeps things growing. Well, where, where, does, where does that fit in? In, in those three things, and, 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 and what can a person do to avoid that, since that seems to be obviously a big uh, reason, well, which is maybe why ladies don't have it so often, because they like to show their, their toenails, and we don't, you know what I mean? Um, well, within our category, it would be category two, which is the fungus infection, and uh, the thing about a fungus infection in the foot is it, it tends to proliferate because the foot is always in a dark environment. Uh, it's in a shoe, it's in a sock, very rarely exposed to the ultraviolet light, which is effective in treating uh, fungal infections or preventing fungal infections. So um, most definitely, if the foot is housed in that area, it's kind of like when we were all in biology class and had to grow out that germ on a Petri dish we would take the uh, the germ and put it on that Petri dish and incubate it in the dark and in a moist area and in a warm area. Um, the thing that we have helping us, by the way, however, when you mention a cold climate as, I didn't know you were cold there in California, but here we certainly are. Um, well, we call, we call 60 degree pretty freezing around here. Yeah, well, now, now I'm very jealous and very upset. But <laughs> besides that, uh, usually with... Uh, cold weather we see less of it we see a lot more in warm weather 
but as you did correctly also say, in in warm weather our shoes our shoes usually um, take a back seat to sandals, and we do have the ability to get that ultraviolet and sunlight in. By the way, that's why a, uh, a laser can help even with that type of condition because lasers are used for fungus infections and to change that environment. I see. And if a person gets, let's say, laser treatment for this type of fungus infection, is that something he has to do, you know, every few months, like a deep cleaning or so, or uh, what's the deal I mean, there? Well, usually um, the treatment associated with um, laser and a, a fungus infection is something that would involve probably a, a series of four or five visits to correct the environment. And then sometimes there is no need for a follow-up uh, to that visit. Uh, if the condition returns, then you would address it appropriately. If the laser would be appropriate at that time, then that would be the direction to go. Um, but uh, usually uh, a treatment regimen of four or five visits would eliminate the problem along possibly with a, a local antifungal preparation. Well, all right. Here you have it. Let your feet breathe. Show them the sunlight as much as you can, I guess. Um, and uh, maybe every so often wash them. That seems to be all going a long way, right? That's, that is for sure. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. You're so welcome. Bye-bye.